Giant Waffle here, and today we're going to do something really cool. Intel sent me this high-powered PC, and as you can tell, I've already assembled it. We're going to go over what's inside of it, how I built it, and then we're going to overclock it. You ready? Let's go. So here's the box that arrived, and let me just say, this is the coolest box I think I've ever received from any company out there. So let's get into it. I'm going to tear it apart real fast, and I'm going to show you every part that was inside of it, list them off for you, and if I go too fast, don't worry, they're going to be in the description of the video. For this build, we'll be using the Asus ROG Strix Z270F motherboard, the Corsair CX750M power supply, an Intel 512GB M.2 SSD, 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance 3000 MHz RAM, a Corsair Carbide Series tower case, a Corsair H60 liquid cooler, a copy of Windows 10, an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1080, and the icing on the cake, the Intel Core i7 7700K processor. So let's get started. Step by step, here we go. Installing the CPU and securing it into the motherboard. Attaching the M.2 SSD with one screw. Adding our liquid cooling mount. Flipping it over and screwing in the liquid cooling standoffs. Cleaning the CPU and applying thermal paste. Evenly placing the liquid cooler on the CPU. Finally, we'll tighten it down. Next, we plug in the CPU cooler pump. Then we're going to add our memory. Make sure you use the right channel. Now it's time to snap the I.O. plate in place. And we can set our motherboard into the case. We'll secure it with several screws. Now we'll add the fan to the liquid cooler and attach it to the case. After that, we'll secure the power supply in the case with screws. And finally, we can plug in the motherboard into the power supply. We can't forget the CPU power as well. Let's add this beast of a graphics card in here, plugging that in as well. And that should just about do it. Let's put this case back together and see how it goes. Now let's see if it starts up. Ah, first time. I love when that happens. Now that we got this thing built, it's time to go one step beyond and overclock its settings. That K in the Intel Core i7-7700K processor means it's unlocked and ready for me to fine tune and tweak it. Just remember this disclaimer. Altering clock frequency or voltage may damage or reduce the useful life of processor and other system components and may reduce system stability or in performance. Product warranties may not apply if the processor is operated beyond its specifications. Check with the manufacturers of the system and components for additional details. But there's no need to be intimidated. Overclocking is something that anyone could do once you see how it's done. So then, here's how we're going to go about overclocking our rig. First, we're going to go into the BIOS and open the overclocking panel. Here, we can see that our block speed is 100 MHz. Our core frequency is going to be our block speed multiplied by the CPU ratio. And for our base speed, that's 42 times our block speed, which is 4.2 GHz. We're going to up the CPU ratio to 48 times, giving us an overclock speed of 4.8 GHz. Now typically, we'd have to increase our CPU voltage to keep up with the demand of the higher clock speed. But this Strix motherboard has built-in CPU voltage regulation, which auto-adjusts it as we need more power. Let's save our settings and restart the computer. You can see here we've gotten quite a bit of power from this overclock. Just for science, let's go back into the BIOS and manually adjust the CPU voltage. Here, I'm setting it to 1.3 volts. We'll save and restart again. And now you can see the results are nearly the same, showing that the CPU voltage regulation was taking effect earlier. Once again, we'll go into the BIOS and increase the voltage, this time to 1.4 volts. Saving once and rebooting. And after running a benchmark, you can see that this is more than we need, and it's giving us the exact same result we had before. So, let's check out a profile that this motherboard offers, which is a 5 GHz profile. Not every motherboard has built-in profiles, and you can easily just increase your CPU ratio and CPU voltage to receive the same result. But, this profile makes the job easy for us. And now you can see the increase in performance that we receive from going up to 5 GHz. Now, I have to say I'm very impressed. As a gamer, being able to get the most out of my hardware is important. We increased the CPU from 4.2 GHz to 4.8 GHz, which I found to be a safe boost. My temp stayed below cutoff temperatures and I was able to get quite a bit more performance. If you want to stack this build and overclock for yourself, click the link in the description below. For Intel, I'm Giant Waffle, and I'll see you next time.